Hey kids, it's Mr. Flaw here. Hope you're well. Welcome to an absolutely beautiful day here in South Buckinghamshire, where today I'm out on another bike review. Today we're looking at the Ducati Monster SP. Now about, uh, I don't know, 10 months ago, something like that, I borrowed the new Ducati Monster, the non-SP version, when I took my Hanagali in for a service, and I really like that bike. And then a few months later, they brought this SP version out, so I thought I need to have a go at that. So we've uh, been looking forward to jumping on this for a while. Bike turned up yesterday, but it rained ever since uh, the bike turned up. But today, as you can see, has dawned absolutely gloriously. So uh, stick around, stay tuned. Let's see if the SP is an improvement over the standard bike. All right, so welcome back to the channel. It's just so good to be uh, properly in summer now. We've had a little bit of a heat wave actually recently. I think I'm recording this on June the 13th. And for the last week we've had absolutely blazing weather in the low 30s yesterday and then it broke out thunderstorms as soon as the bike turned up. So I didn't get a chance to ride it. So this literally is my first ride. Before we get too carried away about what the bike is like to ride, let me show you over the bike and show you some of the differences between this and the standard bike. All right, so here she is then. The uh, beautiful and exotic in that Ducati kind of way. Uh, Monster SP, a lovely machine. I said I'll show you some of the differences between this and the standard bike. There are a few obvious things. So the first thing is the Terminioni exhaust. They look absolutely amazing. Uh, don't look too closely because if you do look down the ends, you can't actually quite see there, but uh, it's got a tiny little opening there. But they do sound good, uh, as you'll hear in a minute, and uh, they look good as well, don't they? So that's one difference. Uh, down the front end, we've got the uh, Olin's forks as well, and we've got Brembo Stylema brakes as well. We'll go through the specs later on. Uh, at the back end, we've also got uh, Olin's. And then, of course, another big difference is this paint scheme. This is a MotoGP-inspired paint scheme. I think it looks absolutely lovely. Uh, yeah, really, really nice-looking bike, I think. A few cool things on it. If I uh, come round and switch her on, something that I like are the lights on here. If I just give her a, a whiz up. In fact, I'll start it as well in the usual Ducati way. They always sound a little bit like they don't want to start, but they always do. Here we go. There she goes. And the reason I want to start it was because I wanted to show you the lights, actually. First off... This amazing daytime running light, this sort of halo effect, I think looks really, really good. And then the other thing are the indicators, which they've built into here, look, which looks good. If I just put the uh, hazards on, you'll see that those uh, indicators at the front are in fact the progressive type. I just think they look cool. And uh, the same round the back as well. Little progressive, I think they're Ducati performance indicators. Let me just uh, let you listen to those exhausts. I'll do a Freddie Dobbs and take the mic off. Hang on. They've got some really good cracks and pops, which you'll hear when, uh, when we ride us some more. Let me turn it off. So there, yeah, so uh, that's what she looks like. Uh, very, very nice bike indeed. Let's get on and, uh, and ride her. Oh, before we do actually get on and ride her, let me just uh, show you under the seat here. There's a little uh, lock here. If we'll do this one-handed. There we go, underneath the seat, there's this useful uh, bit of storage here as well as a USB port as well. So, uh, yeah, quite handy, that. The only thing I would say about that seat, although it looks pretty cool in that red, is I don't know how it will fare over time in terms of the finish on it. Sometimes these sort of coloured seats can go kind of black, can't they? The colour of your leathers or trousers or whatever. But uh, anyway, enough of that. Let's ride her. All right. That's how the bike looks then. How does she ride? Well, in a word, very nicely indeed. Now, as I say, it was uh, about 10 months ago when I rode the standard model. So I'm trying to remember what that felt like because this just feels very similar to me. I'm not sure that so far I can tell much of a difference. Definitely, the bike does feel a little bit taller. It's, uh, I think it's 20 mil taller than the standard bike because of the different suspension. It's got a bit more ground clearance so you can get a bit more lean angle on it as well and the geometry of the bike is slightly different but I can't really notice that I mean in terms of its seating position and comfort it feels exactly the same what I can say is just like the standard bike it feels so light this it comes in I think at 166 kilograms dry so I don't know let's call it 175 wet as a guess but it just feels light and when you're used to riding heavy bikes as I am a light bike just feels lovely. At the end of the day, you can't beat a light bike, can you, for fun? Just talking about that uh, riding position, my legs feel relatively tucked up. They're relatively sporty. My feet are below my hips, as it were, and I've got quite an acute bend at the knee. 
it's not uncomfortable though top end though I'm sat here pretty much bolt upright very very comfortable very wide handlebars on this it's a comfy place to be the seat uh, feels quite hard we'll see after a bit of time in the saddle so far you know it's certainly not uncomfortable it's actually quite roomy as well you can move around on it I'm a sort of medium to small size guy I guess I'm five foot eight uh, and I'm you know it feels like a roomy bike to me I think you'd be all right if you're a, a taller bigger person on this as well just while we're on the hunt for some better roads in a sec let's uh, go through what we're looking at here then well this is the blingy version of the bike it's gained a steering damper that I don't think the standard uh, machine has so that's something new you're looking at sadly you're still looking at these uh, what I call piss pot brake and clutch reservoirs <laughs> I don't know why bike manufacturers do that I, these sort of translucent ones are slightly better than the bog standard white plastic ones you used to get on bikes well I haven't seen those for a while to be fair but on a bike that's got you know SP after its name why don't you catly fit their lovely anodized performance ones on here that I know they make they would just look nice but other than that everything's fine what you're looking at is all good it's all typical Ducati what I do like about the uh, buttonage on here is that they're, they're quite well well, I don't know how you describe it but they you know they've got a lot of profile to the buttons and so on so you can really feel through your gloved hands when you're using them which is good and the uh, and the horn is exactly where you'd expect it to be it's easy to get at so many bikes there's so much complication around on the left whoops let's not get killed on the left switch gear uh, you know if you need to find the horn in a hurry you can't do it on this no problem at all and the, and the indicator is very easy to find what I don't like about the switch gear so much is the mode changing on this is you have to use that indicator you have to press it in hold it and then select the modes that way it's a bit fiddly that but it's a, it's a minor point the TFT nice and clear really happy to see that it's actually got a fuel gauge on this Ducati so many Ducatis don't have that so that's good news uh, it's quite a small TFT but it's perfectly clear as I say I've no complaints with that it's easy enough to use overhead closed let's do a quick uh, do we believe it or not let's see or are they about to close it let's see what happens I reckon they might be about to close it might get away with it anyway where was I yeah so the TFT is good no problems with that and you control it via the this up and down button here on the left again pretty easy pretty intuitive to use no problems there mirrors on it seem okay I quite like this design they're good and rigid they're not vibrating uh, so you know you can see behind you I'm looking at my elbows a bit but I'm not too worried about that to be fair there is a little bit of vibration through the uh, through the seat and the uh, handlebar grips nothing nothing terrible again it wouldn't put me off having one of these you know it is a v-twin and it does have a bit of character this bike character in a good way sometimes you talk about character and it's actually character that puts you off a bike because it's too much of it I'm thinking Harley Davidson. <laughs> hmm, here we go. Road ahead, closed access only. Well, I want to access Great Missenden, so let's see what happens. Sometimes when they close these roads, you can nip round on a bike, can't you? Look at all these flags out here. What's this about? Interesting. What do we think? Oh no, it definitely is closed. Let's see if I can blag my way through. Yeah, I think we can get past there. I'm probably going to get told off by loads of commenters now that this is highly illegal going down a closed road and all that caper but sorry about that I apologise if that's your thinking quick nip down the footpath I think I got away with that right let's get to my uh, favourite bike test roads see how she handles a bit more quick shifter on here up and down seems to work quite well although it's quite an abrupt change so far it's not you know it's not sort of uh, BMW or trance smooth where you barely tell that you change gear this one gives you a bit of a kick when you do it but it works absolutely fine on a bike like this which basically is a funster bike quick shifter is an absolute winner
handling on these monsters is just beautiful. Mainly because of that lightness, I think. All right, he's coming into some better roads now. It's so nice that the, uh, the roads are so dry and warm as well. This bike's fitted with sticky tyres as well. In fact, might be an opportune time for me to talk you through the spec. Let's have a quick whiz over the spec of the bike. Okay, just talking about those tyres, these are fitted, as I say, with sticky rubber. These are Pirelli Rosso 4 tyres uh, fitted to this bike, which is different to the standard machine. Uh, the engine on here, we've not talked much about that. It's the 937cc Testa Stretta V-twin unit. It's the same as on the Multistrada 950 and the Supersport. 111 brake horsepower and 93 newton metres of torque. The braking on the front taken care of by two 320mm uh, discs and those Brembo Stylema four-pot calipers, which are excellent. At the rear, a 245mm disc and a two-pot Brembo caliper. Suspension on the front, we've already mentioned it's got these Olin's forks. For those technical amongst you, these are actually the uh, Olin's Nix 30 forks, fully adjustable. And on the rear, this fully adjustable Olin's shock. Seat height on the bike is 840 millimetres, which is tallish, but that gives you some extra ground clearance and bigger lean angles, of course. Uh, the standard bike is 20 mil, 20 mil lower than that. Uh, you can actually get a lower seat for this, is the good news if you're a shorty. It takes it down to 810 mil. I can flat foot it at five foot eight with a 32 inch leg, no problem with the standard seat. Dry weight of the bike, as I've mentioned, is 166 kilograms. This beautifully finished tank will hold 14 litres of fuel. And electronics wise, this bike is well equipped. It comes uh, as standard with cornering ABS and traction, wheelie control, launch control, that up and down quick shifter, that 4.3 inch TFT, three customizable riding modes, you name it, it's there on this high tech bike. All right, so much for the numbers. How does all that spec translate to actual riding? Well, with that uh, Olin's rear shock, it definitely feels a bit firmer on the road, I have to say. And uh, I do remember that I love the ride, particularly on the standard bike. I'm not convinced that that Olin shock is necessary. It's great as ever for bragging rights, and it does look nice in the gold. A little bit careful as I come past the postman. But on these roads, which are shocking, <laughs> really bumpy, I'm not sure that uh, that's actually an improvement for sort of riding around the lanes. It is, of course, adjustable. I could wind off some preloads, so I wouldn't take what I'm saying too much as read if you're a fan of Olin's. Let's face it, most people are. But I'm sure it could be adjusted to make it a little bit softer. So much grip around these corners, it is lovely. Now, I recently rode the uh, brand new Street Triples from Triumph, the R and the RS. I love those. And I do love these sort of middleweight funster bikes. So, this is what I've got in my mind when I'm riding this. Is this better than the Street Triples? Well, from handling and a lightness point of view I would say it possibly is I'm not saying it's a better bike than those because I'm not sure you know I think I prefer the, the triple to the twin to be honest because this does have that uh, as I say bit of character which I'm not sure I prefer over the over the sound and the character of the triple it's lovely though but man it does feel light now let's go down the bumpiest bit of road I know which is down here just really test out that suspension. Right, here we go. It's about time they did this road up because it's absolutely shocking. I imagine the camera will be waving about. Oh, hello. Road ahead closed. <laughs> they are doing this road. Isn't that hilarious? Oh, no, they're doing that road. Oh, gosh. Well, I can't complain. I've been moaning about potholes for ages this year. They are now fixing them, so let's not complain. It's got so much punch, this bike. It's, uh, that is the beauty of this V-twin. The low down grunt is incredible. Yeah, that quick shift is lovely, especially when you're coming down the box. You know, there's something about your captors, isn't there? And even on the Monster, which is, I, I guess you could call it their sort of entry level bike if there's such a thing in the world of Ducati. Even this feels special when you ride it. There's just something about them that puts a grin on your face. Right, let's have a little look down here. Here we go. It's nice actually, for my size, I can just grip the tank between my legs. It gives me a nice feeling of confidence. We'll be pushing on a little bit. <laughs> yeah! Oh, 
sound more like Bruce every day. Yeah, a little bit bumpy on that suspension down here actually. I think the uh, the standard bike might suit you better on the suspension front. Nothing about. Quick. Do a quick test of the brakes. Stylium is on the front. Let's uh, give those a go. Oh my god, they are brilliant. <laughs> Nothing behind me. Try the rears. The rears are pretty good as well. Those Stylemas have got so much bite. It's just incredible. So it, it's almost like hitting a brick wall. They're fantastic. Yeah, you don't need more <laughs> than the power that this engine's got on for road riding. You really don't. Let's just bring it down a cog. Yeah, quite a lot of vibes when you wind her up. Through the seat as well. That might annoy me over time, but oh, there's no doubting. It's a lot of fun this bike. It's interesting because uh, I'm used to riding my 899 Panigale with that bike. Basically, it's a V-twin, of course, not the tester stretter that this has got. But on that one, it's, it's got not a lot to give. And then when you get to like 7,000 RPM, it just takes off like a rocket. This one, much more flat response. As far as I can tell, as you wind it up, there's no part where it suddenly takes off. You've just got power everywhere. It's a really nice, usable engine. Grip round here is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, lovely bikes these monsters, they really are. Sport for choice at the moment, aren't we, in the motorcycle world? If you want a fun middleweight road bike, there's a lot to choose from. And for me, this and the uh, Street Triple are the tops. Well, I must try an MTO 7 and MTO 9 again. It's been a while since I rode the Yamaha. Yeah, nice. Sounds good as well through the Terminioni pipes. It's not obnoxiously loud. I mean, I have got earplugs in. But it just lets you know they do have a little bit of burble, a little bit of crackle and pop every now and then, which is quite nice just to let you know that they're there. Nice. All right, well, I've had her in road mode. Let's stick her into or race the top one whatever that is let's see what it tells us uh, remember how to do it have to hold the indicator in there we go road let's go up to sport and then oh, close throttle there you go right I'm in sport okay let's see how that feels let's get past this guy Yeah, actually, there's a noticeable difference already. Yeah, and the throttle response sharpens right up. <laughs> yeah, nice. I think given it's dry, we'll leave her in sport mode. Nice. So often on motorcycles I ride, I can't really tell the difference between them riding modes, but in this case, you absolutely can. Those work. Nice. Wow, these brakes, they make your eyes want to pop out your head. It's brilliant. So what don't I like about the bike? Hard to say really, the quick shifter is a little bit not quite as snickable as I hoped it would be. As I say, I have since I've been riding it had some trouble getting it into neutral, but that might just be because it's a new bike and needs to loosen up a bit, not a big deal. And I don't know whether those vibes would uh, get on my nerves or not if I was an owner. They're all fairly minor things. I mean, the overriding factor with this is it's a grim machine. You can't see through my visor, but uh, it's a lot of fun, this bike. And I love the Ducati exoticness about it as well. The paint job on it looks lovely. The fit and finish is beautiful. Yeah, nice bike. Is it worth the extra over the standard non-SP? That's kind of for you to decide, I guess. Ride them both if you're in two minds. I mean, I'd say if you really like the paint job on this, go for the SP. I know this is a bit of a naff way of doing it, but I, I wouldn't do it for the suspension. I don't think that's uh, on for road riding like this that's that's necessarily worth having in fact if anything as I say I think I prefer the standard bike suspension if you're going to take the bike on track actually then yeah probably go with the Olins and get this but for me that wouldn't sell it but the paint job probably would and also the extra seat height I don't need being a bit of a shorty although this isn't hideously tall and as I say you can get uh, 
you can get lower seats for it which make it quite manageable for anyone oh look down here crikey is this this has got to be the most obstructions i've seen for roadworks on this route for a long time and then come in nope let's get out of here all right yeah so overall big thumbs up for me for the uh Ducati Monster SP I'm not convinced it's worth the extra money over the standard bike for on the road I think if I was buying one I'd probably just go for the standard bike you know but if you're a track fan then this one definitely has got some advantages so that I think is my summary so thank you very much indeed to Ducati for lending me the bike for this review thank you to you for watching if you've not been to the channel before I don't just do bike reviews here on the channel but I do trips and tours at home and abroad bits and pieces about looking after your bike in the garage anything and everything about motorcycles i'll try to cover it here on the missenden flyer do hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already it'd be great to see you next time if you're interested in the kit i'm wearing stick around to the very end of the video i'll do one of my little uh, fashion segments and just talk you through the bits of kit i'm wearing because i've got some new stuff on which i'd like to tell you about well why is that it for now i'm going to enjoy the uh, sp for a little bit longer on this beautiful day and you never know, if I get a chance before the bike goes back in the next week, I'll bring you a sort of a summing up video or a vlog or something on the bike. So do stay tuned to the channel if you're a fan of the Ducati Monster. All right, but that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio. Right, well, thanks as ever for sticking around to the very end of the video for, and for my now infamous fashion segment. I've got some new kit on, uh, so to save all those questions that people inevitably ask, what is that jacket you're wearing or whatever, I'll just take you through the kit that I'm wearing uh, and I'll put some links below to it if you're interested as well. Okay, so first off, this jacket is new. Uh, I'm going to take it off, actually. It's a bit warm. It's from Bering. It's uh, A-rated in the CE scale, which make, means it's, it comes in as a sort of... Uh, an urban jacket so a is kind of one way of looking at it is regarded as urban aa is kind of touring and treble a is the best you can get if you want to go on track or whatever like that but this is to say is basically an urban jacket i've taken the liner out it comes with a hood on it as well which is really good but uh, it's a lovely jacket i'll put the name of it on the screen as i say i'll put a link below to it as well uh, so you can check that out uh, just to let you know the links that i put below they are what are called affiliate links now um they're to a, um, a sports bike shop which is the dealer that i use whenever i'm buying kit i have to say i find their service and and their price is really, really good. They don't pay me to say any of this stuff, it's just who I use. If you click on those links though, I uh, must tell you, uh, I do get a little bit of a kickback. You're helping out the channel, but at no extra cost to you. So just for full transparency, that's what those links are below. If you want to find out where your local dealer is, if you want to try things on, then head over to bikeheads.co.uk. Again, I'll put a link below to them, and you can find out where your local stockist is if you don't want to go to a sports bike shop. All right, uh, that's the jacket. I often get asked about my helmet. This is a Shubath C5. It's brilliant. It's a flip front. Uh, I don't flip it, obviously, when I'm vlogging, for obvious reasons, because the camera won't be seen. But uh, it's brilliant. It's got a built-in visor as well. There we go. It basically covers all the angles. And I think what I like about it is it doesn't really look like a flip front. It looks like a, like a sports helmet. It looks really cool. Uh, so, yeah, I really like that one. Again, I'll put a link below to that. Just so I don't forget the gloves I've been wearing today. These are my Rucker summer gloves. Once again, I, I mean, I, I, these are just nice and cool in the, in the summer. They've, uh, and they're great for using my camera as well. And they've got those little pads on here so that you can use your phone or whatever. So uh, yeah, I recommend those. They're, they're great value as well. So those are Rucker summer gloves. Actually, while we're talking Rucker, I've got a Rucker t-shirt on here as well. These are great value. They're something like 20 quid. I'll put a link below. These are the ones that wick your sweat away. I've got five of these. If ever I go touring, I'll wear these and you can wear them in really hot weather. You can get away for at least a couple of days. They don't seem to smell. Uh, they wick away the sweat they're really good on a hot day like today's next up these jeans these are brand new these are from pmj my favorite supplier of jeans they just fit so well for me uh, uh, i can't remember the name of these but again i'll put it up on the screen i'll put a link below they come with this really nice belt and the great thing about these jeans is they are treble a rated so they are the you know the the best protection you can get from a ce point of view so the jeans i really love and then last but not least the boots if i can hold them up they are from falco uh, and what I like about them, in fact, let me move the camera. Let's see if we can do this. What I like about these is, look, you get the lace done up there and you've got these zips here. You can undo the zips, tilt that forward and take them on and off without having to undo them. They're dead easy to slip on and off. And I think they look kind of cool. Anyway, that's it for the fashion segment. Uh, thanks for watching. Speak to you again soon.